Episode four, I believe, of um, of the Stringing It Together podcast. I am Becky, your host, and we are officially a traveling podcast. As you might be able to see from my surroundings, um, I am in Vermont right now. So uh, I have clearly left Chicago. Um, so first of all, I just want to say thank you to everyone that's coming back after such a long hiatus. I think it's been five weeks since I've podcasted and I've previously was trying to do every other week. And if anyone's checking me out for the first time, thank you so much for watching. And I just, I don't know. I just want to send out a general thank you to the knitting community and my friends out there for being super supportive during the past five weeks of intense madness. And I will talk about some of that a little bit later, but it has definitely been one of the most overwhelming months of my whole life. Uh, so I don't know. I just got a lot of love from people and, um, it's good to be back podcasting, but I definitely needed a break for my sanity. And also because so much was going on, I didn't get a whole lot of knitting done. So I wanted to have something to show you when I podcasted. Um, I'm really hoping that the sound isn't going to be much of an issue. I'm very close to the water right now, um, but who could blame me? Uh, I am at, I'm in Vermont, uh, in Ferrisburg, and this is Lake Champlain behind me. So actually those mountains right there are um, the Adirondacks in New York. Um, and Nathan's parents have a little house here and it is amazing. I guess they, they had an older house and then they recently, in the past two years or so, knocked that one down and built a new one. So it's very modern. It's not huge, but it's totally big enough. And it's, um, it's just totally amazing. And we were in Boston for a couple days with his family. And then we came out here. And actually this afternoon, we're going to Western Massachusetts where we're gonna be teaching at a camp in Lenox for the next, eight weeks so yeah so but I love being here it's so beautiful ah. okay so anyway I hope you can hear me I'm gonna to try to speak up um, but I feel like Jenny being outside you're probably hearing some birds and definitely hearing the water and hopefully it's relaxing for you as well uh, okay I definitely have notes because I'm a little rusty after five weeks off and I'm new with this anyway okay so uh, I don't really feel like I've gotten a huge amount of knitting done, but I definitely have finished some big FOs. You might have seen um, one of these on Instagram, but the other two I haven't posted yet as of now. So the first one is dur, 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 dur. this is my Madewell cardigan and it's done. So that's kind of the inside. Here's the outside, there's the patches. I think for this, it's probably better if I just put it on. Um, so this is the Madewell cardigan sweater, whatever. Uh, the designer is Hohi Locatelli, who we all know. And it is a, it's kind of similar to the featherweight. I haven't knit the featherweight, but it's a um, fingering weight cardigan. Um, but what I kind of liked about it is that it's a little bit longer, although I'll talk about that. I kind of screwed that up. And also I loved that it had this pattern, I'm gonna show you here, with the elbow patches. Um, so this was just like a slip stitch color work pattern you can see there. And I, it's a little bit dorky, I guess, but I love el elbow patches and I really wanted something um, that had some personality and was a little bit different. So I definitely wanted to knit this pattern. The yarn, um, I call it my Germany sweater because I picked up the yarn when I was in Germany in January and started knitting it then. Um, it is uh, Drachenwolle, 
I think I have the tag and it's like choco pound or something like chocolate brown basically. Do I still have it? Oh, I think I do, but it's in another project bag. Sorry. Um, I've showed it before. It'll be in the show notes. Um, it's a yarn I've never seen here. It's dyed in Germany. Um, so it's just, it is, it's like a nice warm chocolate brown. And then for the elbow patches, it's, um, I used a Madeline Tosh unicorn tail for this kind of light blue. And then these other two yarns you're going to see in a second. I bought entire skeins for this and that was silly. But, um, one thing I'm kind of not sad about, sorry, I'm going to show you my butt is that, I mean, it's not super short, but, um, I wish it was a little bit longer. It's longer in the front. I just didn't want the pattern kind of called for it to be like kind of mid mid tush length and I didn't want it that long um but I think I can probably remedy it I didn't I blocked it but I didn't really like block it uh because I definitely didn't want to stretch it out too big but probably when I block it which again which probably won't be until I get back to the midwest in a long time I might just pin it out the top and the bottom out to kind of stretch it but otherwise, I mean, it fits and it's my first ever sweater and I'm pretty happy with it. It does kind of, especially if I'm wearing a tank top with it, because I've worn it a couple times, like on chilly nights, it kind of falls off my shoulder a little bit. So I wish, I think that this, I don't know much about sweater construction because again, it's my first one, but I kind of wish that this part was thicker. But other than that, it works. It's warm out. I'm going to take this off, but I'm very happy with how that turned out. Um, one of my other qualms was that I knit most of the body on my Haya Haya Sharps interchangeables. Um, I got gauge on the first try, which was awesome. So I think I knit it on a four. And then the borders, it has all the one by one rib on the bottom border and the, the collar, called for a 2.5. So since I got gauge on the body, I didn't have, or I'm sorry, a 2.5 US. I don't know what the millimeters are. I'm not going to try. Um, so I went and bought some and I bought Addies and they were just the Addy turbos. They weren't the sock rockets. Sorry, little bugs in my face. Um, and I hated them because they have this like kind of beveled edge. I didn't bring them out here, but, um, I really hated working with them, especially doing all the bind offs were just the worst. So that was my first experience with Addies actually, and I don't think I'm that into it. But that's just me. I love my high highs to death, so really I'm sort of like, why knit with anything else? There are times to knit with other things, but my high high sharps are my jam. Anyway, I feel like I am just babbling. So here is my Madewell sweater. It is done. I highly recommend it, especially if you want something that's similar to the featherweight, but maybe has a little bit more pizzazz. I know Sue's knitting it because she wanted something a little longer or something. And I said, knit the made well, because she loves Hohe as well. So keep knitting Sue. It's a lot of knitting, but it actually didn't use that much yarn, especially since I made the smallest size and I made it a little bit shorter. Um, I used about two and a half skeins of fingering weight um, and they were really generous skeins, but still, so happy it's done. I'm just drinking coffee because it's the morning so otherwise it would be bad okay so that is fo number one let's take a segue to an fo that i didn't think i was going to be showing you i thought i was going to be showing you a ho but it is now a ho so i made my first pair of rose city rollers and i do not have sock blockers so you're just gonna have to look at them like this um but these are, um, brain freeze. These are, um, Republic of Wool in her Delta colorway. So I'm calling them my Delta city rollers. <laughs> also because I lived in the Delta. I lived in Mississippi. So, but, oh, I love this colorway, right? And it kind of goes really nice with this background that I have right now. Uh, yeah, I mean... It was great. These knit up super fast and I have a lot of yarn left. I didn't bring my scale, but I have a feeling I might have half the skein left. So I might be able to either make another pair of these 
or maybe make a little bit of longer socks but do contrasting cuff seals and toes I don't know but they are done I did my first rounded toe because that's in the pattern uh, that was really easy and I think it fits my foot better um, but I I mean I think this yarn is totally beautiful it was a great thing to have just to knit on I knit on the plane and I did in the car yesterday and um, yesterday we just, we went on a hike and stuff and, you know, just good potato chip knitting because my other thing I'm working on right now is not, but finish those super quick. Um, and now on to my other enormous finished object. I love this thing, you guys. Um, you probably see me working on it for a while if you follow me on Instagram. This is huge. This is Next level huge. Ready? This is my Willow Bank shawl by Isolde Teague. Um, again, I'm sitting on the ground. Or not the ground, but like they have this little thing. Um, like a platform here. So I'm going to try to show it to you. That's a little bit better if I can get farther away. Look at this. It is longer than my wingspan. It is humongous. And it is so beautiful. This is definitely one of my favorite things I've ever knit. Hands down. I mean, look at that. So this is an Azolda Teak pattern, pattern. And I saw it on her Instagram before she even released it. And I just thought, I have to knit that. I must knit it. Um, so I did. And I got this yarn. This is um, Leading Men Fiber Arts yarn. And they're based in Illinois. Not in Chicago. They're a little bit farther south. Like central Illinois, I think. But they were at YarnCon. And all of their yarns are gorgeous and they're very affordable. So go check out, um, they're on Big Cartel, I think, but you can find them on Instagram and find the link. Leading Men Fiber Arts, I'll put it down here. And their yarns are really beautiful. Um, gorgeous tonals, especially, but they have, you know, some self striping and some variegated and um, gradient sets and things like that. I bought some more of their yarn, but I mean, given the setting, it's kind of overcast right now so it might not be the best but it's this sort of mauvey wine color um kind of hard to see i guess it's kind of getting washed out but it's a beautiful beautiful color um it's knit bottom up which was my first time doing that so it got really fun toward the end it's a little tough a little tough down there but you end it with like making this gorgeous kind of crescent thing and you graft the last stitches together but um super intuitive lace pattern because it looks complicated and I haven't done a lot of lace and this is my first time doing you know kind of this leafy lace stuff but the repeat the repeats are so short and you do so many of them then it's not a problem at all to just kind of memorize it as you go I'm in I'm just in love with it and I highly recommend it great it was written very clearly, um, and this is just going to be perfect for, you know, seeing um, concerts at Tanglewood in the summer and just staying kind of lightly warm. And even, you know, I'm just thinking like, it just looks so nice and so fancy um, that I could wear this if I'm going to a concert in the fall or in the winter with like a little black dress and or to dinner or whatever, and this would be totally awesome. I'm... I love it a lot. You might be able to tell. It it drapes beautifully. It's sport weight. Um, used three entire skeins. I was very nervous at the end of um, sport weight yarn. Um, and I, yeah, I actually got rid of some of the rows in here. Just a couple, um, like a few centimeters. But obviously, I'm not wanting for size. At the end of this, it's still so huge. Just because I was really nervous about running out of yarn. I had enough, but I didn't want to chance it. So this is the Willow Bake Shawl, and I'm in love with it. Did I have anything else to say about that? Um, I knit it on Carbon's fixed circulars. Oh my god, you guys. I think there is a spider attached to me. Hang on. Yep. It was like floating toward me. I don't know if you could see that. <laughs> there are a lot of spiders around here, a lot of intricate spider webs. So anyway, I think it was somehow attached. Wow. Uh, Carbon's... Um, Pick circulars and I loved knitting it on that especially the lace 
having a little bit of drag was was nice totally great okay so that is it for fo's again i want to wear this constantly but i'm going to take it off because it's warm and there's fly buzzing around me it's just nature today come on come on little fly uh, uh okay so now i'm on wix so i actually only have one thing that is actually in progress but um and then one that will be cast on like this afternoon so i'm counting it as a whip so this has been something that has been in my queue for a while since it came out i was like definitely want to knit that and i actually used the yarn from my elbow patches i went to knit one with Allie of get lit and knit hey Allie. And I was looking for, she had never been there. I love Knit One, by the way. It's a beautiful store. You should go if you are ever in Chicago. Um, I was looking for yarn for my elbow patches and I was thinking I would just get some minis. And then of course, just ended up getting two full skeins for elbow patches. But I'm using them promptly. Uh, I didn't know that I was gonna use them for this when I bought them, but I am. So anyway, these are the two skeins so these are also acquisitions but whatever this is they're both Madeline Tosh Marina Light um, I can't help it I have a Madeline Tosh problem and right now I'm just embracing it because it's gonna be really hard to get once I move to Europe so this is Candlewick it's this just beautiful yellow it's not really showing up for me how it looks in real life it's very bright beautiful I'm obsessed with that yellow it makes me happy and then this is a perfect color, again, for the scenery. Um, this is, Mr. Fly is hanging out on it. This is Earl Grey. So oh, it's just beautiful. It's like these kind of sandy, sandy colors and blues and golds. And anyway, so these, I just thought like, hey, they look awesome together. It's brioche time. Back to brioche. So I've only really done one brioche project and it was Stephen West's uh, The Excuse Me Shawl, and, which I started last summer at this house actually. And um, it's awesome and I love doing brioche. So I'm taking it up a notch and I am doing, uh, sorry, 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 sorry. I'm doing the Sizzle Pop Shawl. So this is what that looks like. It's by Nick Graffiti, whose real name is Leslie. Leslie Ann Robinson. She has a lot of brioche patterns and it's beautiful. She has two versions of this and you get both when you buy it. Um, there's a giant one that's square and then there's this smaller one that's a triangle that uses two skeins of fingering weight. I want the giant one but I didn't want to buy more yarn so I'm doing the triangle. It's gonna be fine. Um, hope I didn't give anything away. I just showed that. No, I really didn't. Okay. Um, so it's this beautiful kind of like leafy brioche lace and brioche lace y'all it's the real deal there are some insane decreases and I really have to pay attention right now I don't know if it's gonna become intuitive or not um, but here it's a baby right now but here's what I have so far um, if you can see that so that is sort of the right side this was a lifeline which honestly I don't need anymore goodbye um, it's the right side and that is the wrong side right there. It's my little product progress keeper from Hey Holly Ho Hum. And it came with two little stitch markers, which I think I forgot in Chicago, which I'm really sad about because I haven't used them yet. But anyway, this is, this is it. It's a beard right now. I'm channeling Candace, who is also knitting this Candace of Pin Feathers and Pearls. Haven't seen it in a while, Candace. How's it going? Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm pumped about this. It just takes a lot of concentration at the moment, um, which isn't good for car knitting and all of that. And we have another three hour drive today. So my other whip, well, soon to be whip. Uh, I just put the yarn in my yarn it, which I brought with me. I've been using, I also put a shark sticker. I have a shark thing, shark sticker on there. Um, this is going to be socks for Nathan. Oh my gosh. I don't know if you can see this or not. Kind of. This is 
yesterday we drove to Burlington. We did a little hike on Eagle Mountain, and then we went downtown and got a beer uh, on Church Street and stuff. But we passed right by Must Love Yarn, which I had heard about. I know that Chelsea visited that, and um, I think Jenny, Teddy Cooper Foxes, which is now uh, Woolen Handmade. Oh, gosh. I can't remember. I'm blanking on what they changed their podcast name to. Um, Handmade in Woolen, maybe? I don't know. Um, I'm sorry. I'm sure you don't watch this, but I'm sorry to everyone that's screaming at me right now. Um, we stopped by there because we went right past it. It was Worldwide Knit and Public Day. They had people knitting out on the porch. It was great. Great store. Really awesome if you're in the Burlington area. Um, and I wanted to buy yarn, but I'm not supposed to be buying yarn. So I offered to make Nathan socks. And I was like, just pick out some yarn and I'll buy it and I'll make you socks. So that's how I enabled myself. It's not for me. It's not cheating, right? So he picked out this, which is just a Malabrigo sock. It's getting super washed out, but um, in velvet grapes. So it's like kind of, I don't know if it's black or just really dark purple. And then it has like other shots of lighter purples. He's a purple man. He loves his purple. So, um, and then we looked at some patterns last night and I'm going to make him Hermione's everyday socks out of this. Um, and I think they'll be really great, like, performance socks for him and stuff. Because I love when pianists have funky socks. Because when they sit down on the bench, you know, they're, you can see their socks. And they're, like, eye level with the audience. And he loves the other socks that I made for him. And, yeah. So, those are going to get started very soon. So, that's why I'm counting it as a work in progress. So, that is it. That is all I have on my needles currently. I brought some yarn with me some designing that I want to try to do but I think that's going to take a really long time for me to find out exactly what I want to do with it so I might just be playing for a while with that okay moving on okay, so other acquisitions that I haven't shown um one really big one was that if you guys are aware of skein cocaine on Instagram Gina she has like a huge Instagram following. She has an awesome looking store in Virginia and um, she has a pretty big like online presence as well. And she occasionally does these amazing giveaways on Instagram and I won one of them. I knew I wouldn't be able to bring all of that with me. So we're gonna cut to Becky of the past to show you me opening all of that goodness because it's awesome. Hey guys. Um, so I just got home after a long day of teaching and I have this cat and I also have this huge package in the mail and I'm not really sure what I'm podcasting next so I'm just going to open it on camera because I don't know what's in this so I'm really excited. This is from um, Gina of Skein Cocaine on Instagram and she is like 30,000 Instagram followers I think. And she does pretty epic yarn auctions and giveaways. So I always enter her giveaways because they're always awesome. But again, like 30,000 followers, like a ton of people are entering these giveaways, like thousands at least. And I won one of them, which is crazy. I never win anything, which I know everyone says, but I was like, what? Crazy. So here's some yarn. Crinkle, crinkle. I'm excited because like I never get mail. Um, so I'm just going to open it because she deleted the post where it said everything that I got. So I won and then I was like, I don't remember what it was. Here we go. Oh my God. It's a giant bag of stuff. Oh my God. It's in like this plastic drawstring bag. I'm just going to start pulling stuff out. This is Quince. This is, oh, I'm sorry, it's nighttime. The lighting is not great, it's very artificial. A little grainy looking. This is Finch Quince. Um, 50 grams, 221 yards. So, fingering weight, I think. Um, this is pretty. It's wool. 
I haven't used their finch. I've used their chickadee. So it's not showing up super well, but yeah, it's sort of this reddish color. Awesome. Ooh, chocolate mint oolong tea. Yes. This is Shibui, oh, which I've never knit with. This is like a brown color. Um, this is Ma'ai. Ma'ai. Got it. And it is, um, oh my gosh, sorry, I can't speak. It's 70% super baby alpaca. Super baby? What's a super baby? And 30% fine merino wool. Um, 50 grams, 175 yards. I don't know. What is this, like, sport weight, maybe? I don't know. I've never used this. But this is, um, I forget what this is called, but the plying on this is kind of fancy. Oh, gosh. This is not looking good in my artificial light today. That's what that is. I don't know what I'll do with that, but awesome. <gasps> yes! Okay, this is Plucky Knitter. Um, I've always wanted to knit with some stuff. It's called Antoinette. Oh yeah, it's Marina, Marino and Cashmere. I'm excited. Um, this is like a sort of like a seafoam green type color. This name is funny actually that it's called Antoinette. Um, I don't know, I took French in high school and I don't know if you guys did this with your language classes, but we just randomly picked like a generic French name for ourselves and then we were called that by our teacher for four years. And mine was Antoinette, so that's kind of funny. Oh, that's gorgeous. Okay, I'm already playing. Oh my god! Hedgehog! Hell yeah! This is in film noir, which I have been admiring this colorway. It's really pretty. There's like reds in there, some like brown, black. Um, and I know that Gina really likes this color. Oh my god, this is this is awesome. And like this must have been stuff that she was gonna sell at her store because it has prices on it. And I'm like, this is kind of a lot. Then there's this bag. This like the what is this? Girls Magpie Road Trip Yoth. Yarn in the house, I think. I don't know, I don't really know what this represents, but little linen bag. Holy shit. I'm oh I'm gonna have to bleep that. There's just so much yarn. Holy crap. Okay. So there's this. What is this? Is this patterns? Um, yeah, there's like a pattern for a little um for a shawl. Two shawls? I don't know, one of them looks like that. Yeah, I guess it's this, these two on the color. So there are some freaking things in here. And then there are mystery skeins that don't have any marks on them. But this is kind of hard for even me to tell. I don't know if that's like a dark gray or if it has, if it's a little bit navy. And then this is some sort of gray. Sorry, I'm smelling it. I'm being weird. I have no idea what those are. Okay, so I'm guessing that this is heavyweight lace weight yarn in two colors, and then I can make either one of these shawls with this. That's pretty awesome. That's great. And then, ah, I got a blow pop. And then here's Gina's card, by the way. She definitely put that up there. She owns, I think, Wool Workshop, which is in Roanoke, Virginia. I have a freaking blow pop. And then the last thing is that she, um, I know that she co-hosted the giveaway with a kind of jewelry maker, bracelet maker, and I think her company is called Follow Your Bliss. I'm sure we'll find out in one second. Yeah, here's the box, which is really pretty. Follow Your Bliss, whatever, handcrafted jewelry. There's that. Oh, this is gorgeous. So there's this really nice, it like has a nice weight to it. This stone, I guess, bracelet. And it has a little, let me see, a little, my cat is going crazy. She's going to, oh my God. No, Willow. Oh, Willow. Honey, 
Not right now. She like saw the dangly thing. Okay. So it's got a little ball of yarn on there. That's helpful. Willow, come on, dude. Okay, that was graceful. Just sit here. Just hang out. I just got home, so they're going crazy. Um, this little ball of yarn, like a little heart. And I think you just like wrap it around. <gasps> yes, it's stretchy, which is awesome because I have the tiniest wrists in the world. And I was kind of worried about that because I can't wear bracelets because my wrists are baby wrists. I think it's raining outside. Look at this. Look at it. I'm going to try to hold it all up, but Willow's climbing all over it. So I have one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six skeins of yarn. I have a cat again. Whoa, dude. Ah, I'm moving it. It's not in front of the cat. Six skeins of yarn, two patterns in this nice little book, a nice linen project bag. And this awesome bracelet. And an awkward angle. This is awesome. I'm pumped. This made my day a lot better. Let's hope tomorrow's is good. Okay, um, back to the podcast, I guess. I don't know if this is even a podcast. I don't know. Bye. Okay, so that was a big part of my acquisitions. Other than that, um... When I went to Knit One with Allie, um, I also got, in addition to the yarn, I had had one of my um, tape measures, like the, just the circle ones, like explode on me and it came apart and I wanted a new one. So I was just going to get a plain one, but then I saw this. I mean, come on, it's a koala and it's got like a eucalyptus koosh ball thing. I mean, I couldn't not, like, I don't want to, I it didn't have a price on it, but I was like, I have to get it. And then when I found out how much it cost, I was like, oh my God, that is way too much for a tape measure. But I kind of don't have any regrets about it. Look at him. So cute. He's got the button on that side, obviously, not on that side. So that was an acquisition. And then I did, as I mentioned, get a couple of things from Hey Holly Ho Hum's shop. Um... I got that one progress keeper, my little cat dude, and then it came with two smaller but matching um, stitch markers, which I thought I brought with me, but I don't know what happened to those. It was crazy, y'all. And then I also got a little pineapple progress keeper, which is also MIA. And then I got one of these stitch marker things. A couple other people had gotten these. The Canadians had gotten them. Um, Candace and Laura, I know. Laura, I think? Definitely Candace. I don't remember. Um, I got the Pomelo one. I don't know what happened here. Something must have happened in shipping because it's like kind of cracked or scratched, but whatever. No big deal. Um, I'm not usually a pink girl, but so anyway, it probably won't work this way, but you, yeah, it's twofold. And it's, but you press, oh, there it is. You press the button and it like switches and then you open the little door and you can take out your stuff. It's not super great for traveling because the smaller ones, like there's a space and they can kind of move around. But it's so cute and I don't care, I love it. It's great. So that is it for acquisitions. Moving on, we're getting there guys. Moving on to skeins of my dreams. Um, the big one is that you know, I think, okay, so this is my first sweater and it took a really long time. It's not like I knitted on it constantly, uh, but it, it took a while, you know, and it was not the most exciting knitting, just knitting a sweater around and around and around socking it. Um, but I, I haven't had kids, but I feel like it's that like thing that they say about giving birth where once you actually have the baby, you're like, oh, I want to do that again. And you like forget all the pain. So I kind of just wanted it another sweater. Um, and I have had in my favorites for a long time, the Portage cardigan. I will try to put a picture in here of that. Um, I mean, it's like an oversized cardigan. So it's different from this one. It's thicker, it's DK weight. And it has these awesome pockets that like, I think you just knit flat and then you seam them up and they look cool. 
So I've been wanting to knit that for a while. The problem is, is that I'm not supposed to be buying yarn, especially a sweater's quantity of DK for an oversized sweater. I would need, I think, seven skeins. Um, but what I was looking at was, um, ugh, and I do regret not buying it. Um, Madeline Tosh had a sale over Memorial Day weekend, and I just, you know, I was just looking, and they had um, some boxed car was the name. It's this. I'll try to put a picture if I can find one. Um, it's a gray, kind of like a medium gray with like black or dark gray speckles in it. And I just thought, oh my God, I love gray. This would be the best cardigan ever. And um, I'll get to this later, but I was really drugged up over Memorial Day weekend after a surgery. So I was like, I deserve it, blah, blah, blah. But I didn't buy it. I wish I had in my state, but the reason came in. Ah, stupid reason. So I didn't buy it, but that is in my dreams. And then the next time I looked, it was gone. So that was sad. Um, I want that real bad. That's, I mean, there are lots of other things I've been lusting after, but that's kind of the big one and I don't want this to be too long. So that's pretty much it for the knitting content. Oh wait, one more knitting related thing that didn't really fit in anywhere else is that I got to meet Jacqueline of Brooklyn Knit Folk a couple weeks ago. She was in Chicago for work. And actually when I'd hung out with Allie, um, Allie had told me that she knew that Jacqueline was coming and Allie was going to be out of town and I was like, well, I will totally hang out with her since you won't be here. So, um, so I wrote to her and it was really fun. We ended up meeting up at Knit One and she bought a couple of things there and we sat there and knit for a while. And then, um, we ended up going downtown, kind of walking around Millennium Park, some touristy stuff. Nathan came with us as did a friend of Jacqueline's. And then we all went out to dinner. It was super lovely. Um, it was just really fun. So Jacqueline, thanks for coming to hang out and that was awesome. Um, we only took one like really bad picture at the end when it was dark outside, <laughs> but maybe I'll insert that, but it happened and it was fun and it was great. And like, how cool is it to meet our knitting friends everywhere? So anyway, so that is really it for the knitting stuff. I'll talk a little bit about life, which has been crazy, but if you're not interested in that, I will see you Hopefully in two weeks, we should be able to get back on a schedule now, even though things are still kind of crazy. So, life. <laughs> Last time I saw you, it was right before Nathan and my recital. That happened. It went really well. Everyone apparently understood my Polish, which was cool. Um, pretty much the almost the entire audience was Polish speaking, um, which was very intimidating, but it went well. So that was really fun. And then after that, I just went full on into moving mode, getting rid of everything, except for, I think I took two car loads to my parents' place and stored stuff there. Um, clothes and books mainly, and some yarn and that kind of stuff. And some random, you know, things. But it was, it was a lot. I mean, the moving was very stressful. Moving is always stressful and I've done it many times in my short life. I think I've moved 10 times since going to college, which is really insane. Um, and, but this was different, getting rid of everything, getting rid of the furniture and really trying to sell things because I could use the money for the move to Europe. So that happened. Then in the middle of this, as many of you know, if you follow me on Instagram, cause I posted about it a little bit. Um, I had a big audition and then my, I got home and I started feeling this like stabbing in my jaw and it was horrible, horrible pain. I was not going to be able to sleep. Um, so, you know, I just took a bunch of ibuprofen and then made a dentist appointment for the next day. And it was my wisdom teeth, which just, I don't know, they've just been in my mouth and no one told me to get them out. But basically on this side, it was growing trying to grow into my jaw like into the curve and it was horrible it was very bad so they were just like you need to get these out pronto so I was like awesome timing I have so much time for this but you know the pain was really awful so I was like let's do it so I call everywhere that accepts my insurance and they all tell me four to six months for a wait and I was like no like I cannot be on 
be in this much pain. I can't be on these painkillers that long because I was taking a lot of painkillers. I had to. And um, it was not good. So very long story short, a um, you know I ended up just going to a bunch of dentists and pleading with them and getting the same story about the waiting list um, until one technician took pity on me, kind of bumped me ahead of the waiting list um, if they would have a sudden cancellation for that weekend, and they did. So I was able to get in and get all four of my wisdom teeth removed. Um, it was horrible timing, but it's done. The pain afterwards was actually way more manageable than the pain before, so I'm very glad that I did it. They're healing fine. It went fine. My surgeon was really, really nice and really, really attractive, I'm just going to say. It helped a little bit. I mean, it was nice. And I know that a lot can go wrong with that surgery, actually, and as a singer, that was very scary. So I made sure to tell him, like, my mouth is important. Please don't, like, make me lose feeling in my mouth or hit a nerve or something because... <laughs> Ah, that's a big part of my job, but it went great and recovery has been manageable and now I feel totally fine. That was, I guess, three weeks ago from yesterday and I feel fine. feel great. It's done. But that was crazy. So thank you for all the love <laughs> that you guys sent out. I think most people have been there and it was just crazy timing. Also in the crazy timing department, my parents decided they didn't want to take care of my cats all summer. So I had to scramble and the only option I was able to find was that my amazing friend in Houston, who I used to live with actually, um, offered to take them for the summer and even offered to meet me halfway so that I didn't have to drive all the way to Houston because that's about a, uh, it's almost a 20 hour drive from Chicago. So we met in Memphis, which was more of a nine hour drive for both of us. And um, he took the cats which was hard to say goodbye to them for a while, but I know they're in good hands. He loves them. Um, so they'll be fine. But that was a lot of time and money that I lost doing that. Um, but that's, that's pretty much it. So all the moving stuff happened. It's done. There are a couple big ticket item things that I'm still trying to get sold, but I can do that in August when I get home. And then... Um, that is it. So we are headed to camp this afternoon. And I think we have a week of planning and stuff like that before the kids get there. Um, so that'll be, it'll be exciting. I'm not looking forward to going back to work and camps are normally a lot of work for not a lot of money, but you know, it's rewarding working with the kids and it's going to be beautiful there. Um, Lennox is amazing. So if any of you end up coming to Tanglewood or in that area, um, let me know. I don't exactly know what my schedule will be like, but I'm sure I'll have some free time. We are definitely hoping to go to lots of concerts at Tanglewood. Um, yeah. So let me know about that. That's pretty much it. It's, but it's been a very crazy month and I'm very happy it's over. But now I kind of need to change gears and look to the future and try to find somewhere to live in Germany and figure out my visa status and bleh. Nathan's way ahead of me on that. I mean, he has secured a place to live and he's working on his visa already. Um, but since he's going back to school, it's a little bit more cut and dry on how to get a student visa and all that kind of stuff. Oh my gosh. Okay, I worry this is long, but I guess it has been five weeks, so... Um, I try to keep it short always, but oh well, it might be a little long. We'll see. Anyway, thank you so much if you've stuck with me this long and, um, yeah, I will see you next time. I almost wonder, hang on a second. Is this, I'm going to, I hope this doesn't make you seasick. I just want to give you more of this amazing view that I have. So you can see I'm very close to the water. There's my forehead. If you can see that there's some kayaks we will be using presently, I'm sure. Um, anyway, thank you so much for joining me and I will see you guys next time. Happy knitting and I hope you get to get outside and get somewhere half as beautiful as it is here. 
this summer.